rural scam unleashed, villagers robbed, beaten in protest as government turns a blind eye. Over 100 vehicles collide on icy roads, leaving dozens injured in chaotic morning carnage. Police brutality and ancient heritage destruction, Tibetans protest against CCP's hydropower. Huge chicken egg-sized hailstones terrorize Zhujiang, ominous sign or natural phenomenon. China's aviation crisis, 400 billion renminbi losses, soaring grounded planes, 2024 outlook spells doom. Rural scam unleashed, villagers robbed, beaten in protest as government turns a blind eye. On February 19, over 100 villagers who had deposits at the Yongfeng Farmers Cooperative in Liangshan County went to the county's petitions bureau to defend their rights. They demanded the government help them recover their hard-earned money lost to fraud, but were suppressed by stability maintenance police. According to the victims, the Yongfeng Farmers Cooperative was established in 2014 with support from the Liangshan County government. It heavily promoted large-scale planting of pollution-free vegetables and fruits and special crops. Since its founding, officials from Liangshan County, Jining City, and even Shandong Province have publicly endorsed the Yongfeng Cooperative, which was mentioned in some news reports, leaving farmers with good impressions. However, these were only whitewashing and deception by the cooperative. In fact, under the guise of credit cooperatives, it set up departments like the Fund's Mutual Assistance to carry out illegal deposit and loan businesses. It used high interest rates to attract deposits from farmers, promising they could withdraw principal and interest upon maturity. Unfortunately, the villagers believed the promotion and thought it was like a bank since it had cash machines, tellers, and higher interest rates than state-owned banks. Plus recommendations from village officials, many deposited money into the cooperative. By the time they realized it was a scam, it was too late. Since May 2023, 588 victimized villagers have initiated rights defense actions many times, reflecting the problem to Liangshan County government departments and demanding those responsible be prosecuted and their money returned. But there has been no effective response or handling of the matter. At the rights defense gathering on February 19, some depositors knelt before stability maintenance officials and police but were still suppressed. Six villagers were taken away and some others were beaten by police. Over 100 vehicles collide on icy roads, leaving dozens injured in chaotic morning carnage. At around 7 a.m. on February 23, an elevated road section in Suzhou Industrial Park, Jiangsu Province saw over 100 vehicles collide due to icy roads, resulting in multiple injuries. Videos circulating online show the chaotic scene with large piles of crashed vehicles, some stacked on top of others, and many suffering severe damage. Jiangsu Television reported over 100 vehicles were involved in collisions at the site, with some drivers and passengers injured. Suzhou Traffic Police announced that at around 7 a.m., a multi-vehicle rear-end accident occurred on the Weixin Road section of the Xingtang Interchange in Suzhou Industrial Park, injuring three people who were hospitalized and causing minor abrasions to six others. The cause is still under investigation. Chinese netizens reacted saying, The videos look horrible. This is scary. I just watched videos of several people, including a traffic officer struck. Hope they're all right. What happened to the traffic officer who was struck flying? I saw a traffic officer and a girl get struck flying. Also someone wrapped up completely on a stretcher. I was an hour late for work this morning because elevated roads were closed off. All elevated roads in Wuxi shut down, the whole city running late. Fellow Jiangsu province, others get school closures or work holidays, but Suzhou students still have to attend class in this weather. The roads were so slippery this morning on the school run. It's like hail, all ice beads, not snow. Freezes as soon as it lands. Suzhou would make people work and attend school even if it was raining knives. Not just one elevated road, there were also crashes on Xingtan Street and Xingdong Street. Hope everyone is safe. Can't there just be work and school closures for weather like this? Human safety should be the priority. This isn't a natural disaster, it's a man-made disaster due to dereliction of duty. At 6 p.m. on February 22, Suzhou Meteorological Bureau issued a yellow warning that from the night of the 22nd to the morning of the 23rd, parts of Suzhou roads, especially highways, elevated roads and bridges, would see icy conditions affecting traffic due to rain and low temperatures. Police brutality and ancient heritage destruction, Tibetans protest against CCP's hydropower. Tibetans in Sichuan have protested for days against plans to build a hydropower station that would destroy six monasteries. They faced crazy crackdowns by local police and hundreds were arrested. 
Tibetan writer Wozer revealed on Platform X that some monasteries to be destroyed have over 1,000 years of history and preserve precious ancient murals. Recently, social media circulated videos of lamas and Tibetans kneeling, crying and pleading for help. According to Radio Free Asia's Tibetan service, the protesters were from Wangbuting Township, Dege County, Gansi Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture in Sichuan. Due to plans to build the Gongda hydropower station on the Jinsha River, six monasteries will be destroyed and two villages with 2,000 residents will be forcibly relocated. Local Tibetans have taken to the streets to protest over the past few days. The most concentrated protest took place on February 14 when over 300 Tibetans gathered outside the Dege County government building. Citing local Tibetan sources, the report said police used water cannons, pepper spray, tasers and other means to crack down on protesters, injuring some who were hospitalized. Over 100 Tibetan monks and other protesters have been arrested. After the February 14 protest, authorities closed all major roads in Wangbuting Township and imposed strict controls, including communication restrictions, on villages and monasteries. According to Voice of Tibet, on February 20 Chinese officials went to Yinan Monastery in Wangbuting Township to forcibly relocate its monks. The monks and local Tibetans knelt and begged the officials to stop the eviction orders but were refused. Tibetan writer Wozer shared photos and videos on Platform X, revealing the history and magnificence of the ancient thousand-year-old Wandue Monastery that will be submerged. Wozer introduced that Wandue Monastery has a thousand-year history. It survived the Cultural Revolution and preserved old buildings like the Grand Hall, Scripture Hall, and Protector Hall, as well as precious ancient murals. A set of murals from the 14th to 15th century is one of the most important Tibetan Buddhist murals found locally so far, with high research value for Tibetan painting. But now, due to the hydropower station, the monastery and murals face inundation. Wozer also criticized how the original beauty of nature is constantly destroyed to create endless industrial tumors. From the man-made extinction of Yangtze sturgeons and finless porpoises and the Three Gorges Dam that could cause huge future earthquakes, to the South-North Water Transfer Project that forcibly interferes with natural resource balances and causes boundless harm, this anomalous big country making one misstep after another will surely be cursed for eternity by countless future generations. Huge chicken egg-sized hailstones terrorize Jujong, ominous sign or natural phenomenon, on February 21st. Parts of Wanzhou and Lishui in Zhujiang province were hit by rare torrential rains and hailstorms, with hailstones as big as chicken eggs. The dense hailstones covered streets, instantly transforming them into flowing ice rivers. Locals exclaimed that they had never seen anything like this before, this is not an auspicious sign. The official WeChat account Zhujiang Weather released a message stating that sudden hailstorms occurred in towns such as Heqing Street in Qingtian County, Wenxi Town, Shangta Town, and Jupu Township in Lishui City. The hailstones measured around 2 to 5 centimeters in diameter and lasted for around 5 to 10 minutes. After 6 p.m. that evening, the skies over Lishui suddenly turned gloomy, followed by torrential rains mixed with hailstones that came pouring down. Local residents said some hailstones were as big as chicken eggs. With strong winds and heavy rains, the dense hailstones killed small birds that failed to take shelter in time and damaged many cars parked outdoors. Ms. Zhang, a Lishui resident, told media that neither she nor her family had ever seen such large hailstones before. She saw many children wearing helmets to collect hailstones and reached out to grab one herself, only to be struck by a hailstone that caused swelling in her arm. The dense layer of hailstones covering the ground was 20 centimeters thick. Many curious people walked and stomped on the ice-covered roads. On the streets, the mix of hail and rainwater formed a rare ice river, leading to traffic jams and making it difficult for residents to travel. Locals said they had never seen anything like this their whole lives. In addition to Lishui, hailstones also fell in Shantan Town, Yongjia County, Wanzhou from around 6.40 p.m. to 7.20 p.m. on the 21st. One resident said she was ambushed by hailstones on her way home. Some were as big as chicken eggs in very rare occurrence. Her umbrella was nearly smashed through. Online images show local residents filling entire basins with large hailstones. The sudden downpour of huge hailstones in Zhujiang has sparked much discussion. Many netizens bluntly said this was an ominous sign, it was thunder yesterday and hail today. The cosmos is raging, the earth is roaring, wake up! This is not an auspicious sign. China's aviation crisis, 400 billion renminbi losses, soaring grounded planes, 2024 outlook spells doom. Since the pandemic outbreak, China's civil aviation industry has suffered losses for four consecutive years, with the losses in the first three years exceeding the profits from the previous decade. 
During this period of huge losses, flight and passenger volumes declined rapidly while aircraft procurement continued to rise, resulting in capacity recovery outstripping passenger recovery currently. Industry analysis indicates that the heyday of high-speed growth for the civil aviation industry is over. According to Chinese state media First Financial on February 23, the civil aviation industry lost over 400 billion renminbi cumulatively over the three pandemic years. Although 2023 saw reduced losses, the industry remained in the red with 28.8 billion renminbi in losses, including 17 billion renminbi from aviation companies alone. Passenger volumes, especially international ones, have yet to recover to pre-pandemic levels. By the end of 2023, international flight capacity only recovered to 55.8% of 2019 levels. Many wide-body aircrafts originally meant for international routes were forced to compete domestically. The 2020 pandemic dealt civil aviation a huge blow. According to Civil Aviation Statistics Bulletins, the annual passenger volume in 2020 was only 420 million, a 36.7% decrease compared to 2019 and the first ever year-on-year -year decline since 1989. Although 2021 saw some rebound, 2022 passenger volumes dropped sharply again to just 250 million for the year, lower than a decade ago. The extreme supply-demand imbalance directly resulted in huge losses for three consecutive years, 97.432 billion renminbi in 2020, 84.25 billion renminbi in 2021, and 217.44 billion renminbi in 2022. The losses in just three years exceeded the profits from the past decade. The report states that amid rapidly declining flights and passengers, large numbers of aircraft were forced out of commission for long periods, such as Hainan Airlines revealing 96 grounded planes at one point. In 2022, Industry aircraft utilization hit rock bottom, plunging from over 9 hours pre-pandemic to just 4.35 hours. However, China's civil fleet size continued growing through the pandemic, from 3,645 planes at the end of 2019 to 3,717 in 2020, 3,856 in 2021, and 3,942 in 2022. By the end of 2023, the fleet count reached 4,013, a 10% increase of 368 more planes compared to the end of 2019. Nevertheless, 2023 saw slower-than-expected international flight resumption. According to Flight Master data, overall international passenger flight recovery by Chinese carriers reached just 37.5% of 2019 levels, from less than 10% early in the year to 55.8% by end 2023. With capacity recovery outpacing passenger recovery, aircraft daily utilization rates and load factors for Chinese carriers also failed to recover to pre-pandemic levels. Average daily use per plane was 8.1 hours in 2023, 1.2 hours less than 2019, while average load factor was 77.9%, 5 percentage points lower than 2019.